Nietzsche once said, he who fights with monsters should look to it that he himself does not become a monster. And if you gaze long into an abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. But what if within the abyss lies the ultimate key to mastering our fears, to control it and use it for our benefits? What if I told you that Nietzsche himself held the secrets to not only facing this abyss, but conquering it? Friedrich Nietzsche, a name that you've probably already heard in your past, was not just a philosopher, but a cultural critic who argued traditional European morality and religion, completely unafraid the whole path. His life, filled by illness and solitude, is what has contributed to his philosophy. Nietzsche's approach to overcoming fear wasn't about denial or avoidance, but about embracing and controlling it. So today in this video, I'll go over his view on fear and how he conquered it, to hopefully help you with being able to do so yourself. Nietzsche introduced the idea of the Ubermensch, or in English, the concept of a Superman. A Superman is an individual who has overcame the collective mentality of society and his own internal fears to reach a higher state of being above all others. This concept of the Ubermensch represents a man who doesn't give in to societal norms or fears, but creates his own values and builds his own path on the way in the direction he wants, not the one he's told. Do not fall into preordained values, norms, and moral codes, but instead dare to question, challenge, and even transcend these societal understandings. It is a concept anyone can become, even yourself. But most stop when they realize Nietzsche's Superman is a creative individual who does not obey any laws, not even those of God. In the journey of becoming an Ubermensch, you must master your own largest fears and doubts. It is a road with solitude and existential fear. One that although anyone can become, is extremely difficult and has barely been replicated in the entirety of our human history. Nietzsche's Superman is therefore not a superhuman in the traditional sense of acquiring amazing physical powers, but rather a Superman in the sense of achieving a rare state of mind and moral autonomy. It is important to state that this path is not similar to that of nihilism. In fact, it is nowhere near it. Instead of rejecting all values, purposes, and moral structures, Ubermensch aims to recognize and create a set of laws to live by that are truly life-affirming. It encourages a more engaging way of life, to find your inner self and to live by rules of your own, not those of others. It also presents a paradox. The idea of not following any laws, even those of God, signifies a philosophical stance against the acceptance of external authorities, whether they are religious, moral, or legal. The Ubermensch is the pinnacle of moral independence, where the Superman is who can control the values of the world. One thing to consider is that becoming an Ubermensch is not an easy path. It requires a continuous pursuit of self-overcoming, a constant evaluation of your own beliefs, and commitment to following the principles you have set for yourself. In the view of Nietzsche, this philosophy can be both a gift or a path to self-destruction. Some argue you are simply not capable of becoming one due to the sheer amount of commitment, power, and self-mastery it would require. To illustrate that concept of an Ubermensch, consider the story of Malala Yousafzai. From a young age, Malala embraced her fears that would stop even the strongest of people. She stood up against forces that denied girls education in her region, but her determination and commitment to sticking with her values and not falling into the norms in her society not only made her grow into a better person, but allowed her to influence education at a global level. Like Nietzsche Superman, Malala did not conform to the collective beliefs of her society and what is thought to be normal, but instead changed these opinions into something greater. It is not about denying the existence of fear, but about realizing it and pushing through the worries holding you back. At the core of Nietzsche's philosophy is the will to power. The emotion within every individual to assert and rise their own power and influence. Nietzsche believed that fear often stems from our sense of powerlessness. But by embracing our will to power, we confront our fears not as obstacles, but as opportunities to grow stronger. 
This concept of will to power represents everything about power. It describes the fundamental energy behind our actions, our thoughts, and desires. It is a part of our mind urging us to achieve our highest potentials. However, it's not really about being superior to everyone, but rather about self-mastery and autonomy. It is about the drive towards self-overcoming and self-realization. The emotion of fear, where doubt lurks and anxiety arises, Nietzsche believed are just chains of perceived powerlessness. These chains, built with our own insecurities and apprehensions, cause us to be blind, incapable of seeing our full potential, restricting us from a path of personal growth. Fear, in Nietzsche's view, is not just an emotional response to perceived threats, but a reflection of a deeper uneasiness in our lives. To embrace this idea of will to power, it requires for us to change the way we view fear. To not be worried when in fear, digging us into an only deeper hole, but to see it as a strength promoting our paths of personal development. To believe each fear confronted, each obstacle overcome, is a sign of making ourselves resilient. This is what will make us confront our fears instead of running away from it. This concept can be a great tool to personal growth. If we use it by facing our fears even through the largest of doubts and challenges, we will rise above the average and achieve our highest level of personal power and autonomy. While it is undeniably difficult, it is possible. So, the next time when you're in fear, just try your best to embrace that uncomfortness. It will do you wonders, if you are successful, of course. Just remember this. Each time you face a certain fear, it becomes easier and easier to overcome it again. The first step and move is always the hardest, but once you get through that, your life will improve. Failing after confronting your fear isn't even as bad as you think. Just facing your fears alone instead of running away from them is a great step. Perhaps the next time you must present for university or apply for a job, speak clearer, act with confidence and overcome your fears. So how do we actually turn fear into action? Well, the first step is to recognize where they come from. Understand the roots of where our anxiety and sadness arise, and while it does require courage to overcome these fears, when we accept and realize these causes for our emotions, our fear will dissolve away, simply because we are aware of the problem. We can't gain control of our emotions if we don't know why they actually exist. We also must understand where these fears can even stem from in the first place. And I'm not talking about why they exist, but where or how we're even able to come up with such feelings. Typically, our anxiety, stress, these all come from our deepest conflicts and desires. This means that we can actually use fear to find what we truly want in life, which again goes perfectly well with the concepts of will to power and Superman. After we've understood where our problems come from, we're able to redirect this energy into the areas of light that require attention, change, or growth. In this view, we can use fear as a tool to help us realize what boundaries must be pushed and which challenges should be confronted. So simply, when you encounter fear again, embrace the discomfort, analyze and acknowledge where it grows from, harness it towards a greater life. This is how we can become resilient, authentic, and really understand our inner selves. Now, while Nietzsche doesn't promise a fear-free life, he does provide a framework for transforming that fear into personal growth. One thing is that when confronting your fears, you must be realistic. Don't do something that you know you can't do. Rather, know the boundaries of what you can push through and pursue them with confidence. Simply ask yourself, what fears are you facing in your life right now? 